Uh, hello everybody, it's uh, Nick Grimshaw here from Learn with Nick and uh, I'm really excited to get started today on our um, new broadcast on, uh, we've been working on a series of um, dream building and goal setting seminars. So the process is to begin starting with your visualization and your vision um, statement and then working from your vis vision statement through um, clarifying that statement, bringing it into focus, making it crystal clear um, what you, the tools and things that you need to do that. And today we're going to talk about the dream gap. So now we're getting to a point where all that work that's been going on before laying this groundwork and it seems like a lot of work to you know write out a vision statement and and put things in the vision statement that you want to see as your what your dream will look like in reality when it happens um, and and clarifying and tweaking and and doing all those sort of things um, really um, uh, seems like a lot of work but um, it's not um, as much work as um, trying to do all of this um, without doing the work because what happens now is the magic begins. And um, so that, that's great. Um, I'm just going to check on something here. Um, um, Okay, so um, we are broadcasting here, um, and um, so I welcome you to this session, just in case you don't know or didn't get it at the beginning. My name is Nick Grimshaw. Um, I do these things because I love goal setting and, and I love the whole topic. Um, I started because I needed to figure out how to goal set, how to how to dream, and then how to goal set because they're two separate things. So um, we'll work through that today a little bit as well because you begin to see the dream and what comes from this really gigantic dream you have. Now all of a sudden you're beginning to see the steps that you need to take to achieve this dream. So when we started out, we talked about not worrying about the details, not worrying about how you were going to get to your dream, just to dream big. Because in most cases, most of us don't dream big enough. And um, I, I, I was just sort of made aware of this last night because I was listening to a Brendan uh, Bouchard um, video, and uh, we're going to watch a, a Brendan uh, Bouchard video in a minute, um, and I was listening to, uh, I'm just reaching for my um, vision statement here, I was just listening to um, Brendan, and he was talking about um, how he attracts Facebook um, subscribers, how he does, how he works Facebook, and, and I have put in my little, um, my vision statement was to grow my mailing list by 10,000 people a year. And I thought that was like huge. I thought that was huge. Well, um, he went from like 400 and some odd thousand to over to a million point six in like a few months. So, you know, you never dream big enough. That's probably one of the things I've learned in doing this. So don't be afraid to really have a huge dream. And, um, and then you work the small steps to get there. The big dream is huge. It should scare you. It should excite you. It should drive you. And then when you get to this section where we're going to talk about the dream gap, then you begin to see the steps you need to take sort of materialize out of the ether. They start to show themselves 
to you because you've done all these other steps. So let me go to my sh screen share. <laughs> um, okay, let me, I've just got to change my screen share up here a bit. Um, get the one I want. And go back here. And we're going to have to do this again. Okay, there's the one I want to share. All right, folks. Um, a couple of things. So the, the, what we're talking about today is the dream gap, what it is, and how do I or you use it. So what do you do with that gap once you've um, got a really clear vision of what that gap is, then what do you need to do? That is what we are going to be working on today. Okay, so um, so we'll go to our first slide because um, ooh, I have to go back out to do that. Uh, boom. Um, and we'll put this up. And slide share. There it is. Um, it's a little different working um, with Chrome. I decided to use Chrome today. Um, and um, um, it, it does things a little bit differently, but um, actually a little better than using Firefox as a matter of fact. So, okay, it's prime the pump, and um, uh, the quote is, most of us spend life in a trance. Only those who bridge the gap between reality and dreams succeed. Saru Singhal, I believe is the name. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Um, so there it is. Most of us spend life in a trance. Only those who bridge the gap between reality and dreams succeed. So um, that's what we're going to be talking about today is bridging that gap, how we do that. Um, because you can have this amazing dream. It can be fantastic. You can visualize it in living color. Um, but until you actually do something, it doesn't Nothing, nothing works to materialize it into your universe until you do something, right? So um, I, we're going to go to uh, Brendan Bouchard's video. He's going to talk about one of the things or a couple of three things that kind of get in our way of our dreams. Um, and it's a great video, so um, it runs about six minutes. So uh, let me go and... Um, change my uh, there we go so that's what I need come back here I go to sheet screen share <laughs> can't say it today and oops now I have to go and do something there I have to enemies that prevent us from advancing our lives from actualizing our potential from living our dreams and the first enemy we all have is doubt you know, we, we doubt whether or not we're capable, we doubt whether or not we're worthy, we doubt whether or not we'll succeed, we doubt whether or not we even deserve it. And it's so unfortunate because I think doubt is one of the greatest enemies of our lives. And it's so easy to overcome, but most people won't practice the discipline of overcoming it, which is weird, right? They say, oh, I'm so doubtful, and they stop. And it's like, if you have any negative recurring emotion in your life, doesn't maturity require you to face it and say, hey, how do I fix this? You know, if you're always doubtful, you can't just wander around and say, oh, I'm so doubtful, like some kind of victim. That, that's not fair to the humanity you've been given, that, that real power of free will. It says, hey, you can direct your consciousness. That's why you have this big prefrontal cortex. Other animals can't. We can. So handle it. If you've been plagued with doubt your whole life, then face it. Stop running from it. I know that sounds hard to say to people, but I, was, I had the same story. I was so doubtful that people would want to care about what I say. I was so doubtful that people would want to read my books or listen to me at all. I was so doubtful that I could chase my own dreams. And I realized, for what reason am I doubtful? 
because of past failures in the space. No, I'm trying something new because uh, people told me I might not be able to do it. So what makes them an expert on my capabilities and my potentialities? I thought, well, wh why am I so doubtful? We're doubtful because the, the, the germ of fear spread in our body because somebody planted it there one time or we cultivate it with our own thoughts. And at some point, maturity and consciousness says, if doubt has been plaguing you, let's have a look at it. And let's realize, well, how do you banish it? Well, every single thing that we know from spirituality, from philosophy, from the great writers and the great texts of the human culture has all revealed one thing. Where there is doubt, grant me faith. That we have to have faith. And faith does not mean the absence of doubt. Matter of fact, the very definition of faith relies that doubt is still there, right? You can't have faith unless there's some part of you that says, well, I'm going to go anyway despite the doubt. So I'm not saying we have to get rid of doubt forever and handle it. I'm saying doubt should never prevent you from advancing when you feel like advancing. That in your own mind, you must say, okay, I must trust in my ability. I must trust that I will figure it out. I must trust that I can build it. I must trust that I can get some help and progress even though the doubt might be there. Look, the hero is a hero because the hero does it anyway, right? Even though the hero is terrified and risking it all, goes anyway. And we're all heroes in sense. We can all be courageous. But I also think, you know what? Society overblows courage. Society says, you know, courage has to be some big, magnificent act. But it's not. I mean, courage in this world anymore is just having the, the belief in yourself and having the, the, the ability to genuinely express who you are. If you're doubting yourself, the only way through is to give yourself more faith, take more action. And with more faith and more action, comes more competence. With more competence, comes more confidence. In psychology, they call it the competence confidence loop, right? The more you learn and try, the more you master and develop. So go out there. Even with that, yes, let the doubt be there, but do it anyway. I think the second great enemy we all have is delay. And I think delay is one of our great challenges. And delay doesn't just come from doubt, though they're very related. If I'm doubtful, I'm more likely to delay. But a lot of people delay just because, frankly, they have something in themselves that either they have a competing priority, or they're lazy, or they're uninformed. And that's hard to say. I get it. But it is true that there's a part of us that you know, we, we don't go and do our own desires, not because we're not smart. It's because Seinfeld is on, or you know, some new show is on that we want to watch, so we watch that show. And that's, that's indolence. That's not ignorance. It's just sitting around. And so often we delay. Well, I'll get to that tomorrow. No, you probably won't. You're not going to get your dreams in 50 years. Most people awake with the dream in their mind, but they let that dream die in the daylight. You know, they have the dream at night. It dies in the day because they take no action towards it because they're fooling themselves. Maybe someday I'll get to that. But, you know, no one wants to be that person who ends up at the end of their life regretful because they never began what they wanted to. So what are you waiting for right now? What have you been delaying for way too long that you know you need to get to? Maybe today's the day. Put your feet on the ground and say, I'm going to begin this. Because, you know what, the only way through a delay is also action. So what's the third one? I think the third one is division. And what I mean by division is we feel divided. We feel different from other people. We feel like there's this great divide between us. There's this chasm between us and other human beings. And you can recognize this person all the time who's really having challenges in their life, who really is struggling from division, because they say the same thing. They always say, oh, well, they can't understand. Or they spew hate. And their hate or their belief that other people can't understand them accomplishes the same thing protects them, and keeps them from connecting with other people. And because those elements of ourselves and our, our beliefs about other people divide us from humanity, divide us from others, guess what we do? We don't ask for help. We think, well, they can't understand me. I'm not going to ask for help. Guess what we do? We judge other people. We become critical of other people. We push away other people. We stop being kind and respectful of other people. And so that division, that part of us, that believes that, that we are separate from others, that forgets about the reality that humanity is really united by a common energy, by a common force, by at least a common purpose to thrive and survive, 
that if we forget those things, then life loses its color. That when we are no longer connected to other human beings, we can no longer be connected to ourselves. We can no longer be connected to God, to the Creator, to the cosmos, whatever you want to call it. The vision and that sense within us that we are separate is what prevents us from getting ahead. So what can we do? All that we can do, again, action. The only way to get over that divisiveness between us and another person is to go be kind, to go say something, to explicit, to ask, to put ourselves into play with other human beings again in ways that we build magnificent relationships, that we build real connections that are meaningful and deep again. Look, all of these things, doubt and delay and division, all these things can be overcome. We just have to learn to recognize them. The first step is always awareness. So what have you been doubting in your life that's preventing you from moving ahead? What have you been delaying in your life that's preventing you from moving ahead? How have you been perceiving other people that have been preventing you from developing relationships and moving ahead? When you start to see these things, you can break through. But it's only with that deep desire within yourself to have faith, to take action, to become your highest self, to overcome the very things that are limiting you. That's what makes us great. That's the great shine, that's the great shine of becoming a mature, conscious human being. So I say, why not make this day the day that we redesign our lives so that doubt, delay, and division are handled by faith, action, and love. Let me just... We we'll just have to stop the video there. Okay. All right. So um, you heard um, a word over and over and over again uh, in that uh, video, and the word was action. And it's what I, I sort of uh, set up the tape with that word action. Action is what's going to bring that dream closer to us. Okay, so your dream, you have this magnificent dream, whatever your dream is, and there it sits. The action draws that dream in, and that's what creates the manifestation, because as you act, you pull that dream closer to yourself, and it actually manifests in the physical universe around you. It is magic. It, this is why this stuff is so much fun. It's why um, all the work, all the New Age work, the, the work on quantum uh, physics um, and, and how the universe really works, uh, it's magical when you start looking at it and building your dream and setting your goals is a magical process. And I want to give you an example of something that happened to me. Um, just to, to, to say, as you do these processes, if you do them as I've talked, you go back and look at the uh, other videos, do the steps that we talked about doing, the universe unfolds for you as you need it to unfold. So case in point, let's go back to my vision statement and um, what I've been thinking about is how do I reach a larger audience? How, how do I um, reach further out? How I want to get I, I want to get my message across. I think um, that um, I'm passionate about daily practice. What you do daily is what you will see yourself create in the future. Um, and, and so this is all part of what I love to do. So vision statement. So I've been part of you, you in your vision statement you make statements in the present tense about what your dream will look like. What What's it in the present tense? So one of the things I did, I mentioned this before, um, our mailing list grows by 10,000 names a year. And as I was talking to you, um, to me it seemed like a big goal. Listening to Brendan last night, it didn't seem like such a big goal. But here's the thing. For weeks now, since I've developed this, I've been thinking about, well, how do I get there? Right? So, so 
I haven't like been like it hasn't been like it's a worry. It's like okay, there's something there because you when you write this, you don't want to be thinking how you get there. But as you start to get to your gap, what's the gap between your reality and what you want to achieve? Now, okay, what tools can I use? So I've been asking in my morning uh, meditation for help, for ideas, for ways to build that list that I need. And a couple of days ago in my mail, there popped up a Brendan Bouchard uh, invitation to a video that he did. Um, and it was all about th this part of, um, of my dream specifically. But um, if you're in an online business, part of that is building your list. Um, so um, I watched uh, the video. I'm going to watch it. I don't know how many more times. I took notes. I took um, screenshots. I did everything as I watched um, that video. But it was like it was an answer to my prayer. I needed, I wanted a, um, an idea of how to move forward. Now, that's my, that's one of my statements in my, my vision statement. I've watched a video. Um, it's pretty simple what he says to do. So what separates me from my current, maybe I get 50, 60 new names a month to getting that. What separates me is action, taking action. Okay, so let's go to, uh, whoops, just a minute. Let's go back here. I get, I've got to get the hang of, of doing it with the new, with um, Chrome instead of Firefox. It works a little differently. Um, okay, so let's, Bring me back. We'll, we'll put this on screen share. There we go. Okay, so finding your gap. First step is to write your ideal scene. What is the ideal you are striving for? What does your new life look like? Or even more importantly, what does it feel like? Seeing is okay, but feeling, tasting, smelling, and hearing are the keys to unlock your vision. Okay, so um, that's your, your first step. Now, um, a lot of what I've been reading, they, they do it the opposite way around. Where are you? Where do you want to get to? But to me, that's going, f uh, to me, let's take our vision, our positive created vision, and then look at where our reality is, and then we start looking at the gap. So first is your ideal scene. And, and really, um, visualization is a bit misleading because you think of seeing. So you close your eyes and you look at some part of your dream and you see it. But what I'm talking about is feeling it at a gut level. Get it in here, not just a pretty picture that you look up, uh, out at and say, that would be nice. Yeah, I'd like to live like that. No, gut level, in here. How does it feel? How does it taste? How does it smell? What colors are you seeing? How does the sand on the beach, if that's part of your dream, feel? How does that gritty sand, is it white sand? Gritty? Is it smooth sand? Is it a rocky shore? Um, you know, everybody has a different kind of vision of what they want. Now, how does your day, what does it look like? How does it roll out? What do you feel? Um, what do you feel inside? What is your heart telling you? When you breathe in that fresh ocean breeze, mine's about being away during the 
um, cooler months here in the northern environment and being somewhere where I am working on writing my book that I need to write, um, relaxing, um, recuperating from everything that's gone on the year before, kind of relaxing, enjoying the moment and preparing for the following year, for the things that I want to do for the following year. So um, what if you just see a vision of a palm tree and a beach and maybe a beach house or something like that, but when you walk through the house in the morning, do you have tile floors and are they cold? Are the tiles cold? Are they warm? Or is it a wood floor? Or, I mean, it could be even that you're not looking for anything fancy. You just want to be on the beach somewhere. Is it like packed earth floor? Who knows? What is your dream? That's that's what it's all about. So, um, so, so as you write out your ideal scene, and you should do it now, um, or within the next couple of days while you're thinking about it, and I've talked about this before, i talked about it a million times, it's one of the most critical steps, so that you get, you've, you've got, you can look at your vision statement. What, how does that look? What, what does that vision statement you've created, how does that look as a life? Not just as a list of things. How does it look like as a life? That's where you're going on your ideal scene. So again, it's a bit of work, but your dream building, the, the detail and what you're doing right now, this happens once with revisions as you go along. So you might have to revise your dream slightly um, one way or another, or something's not working or something you've changed and you want something slightly different. You're going to fiddle with that dream and you'll always fiddle with it. But the basics of what you're outlining now stay with you. This is this is what turns you on. This is what lights your fire. This is what gives you this is your passion. So, um, so you're going to stay with this. So once you've done this, then the process of um, goal setting that you can do like uh, you need to do it daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. Five years out, ten years out. That's what you need to do. That's how. But you can do that. Sit down and do it at any time, or at a, like a really good place to work on your um, on your goal list is at the turn of the uh, year. So you're gonna sit down. Okay, this is what I accomplished this year. This is what I still need to accomplish. This is how I'm going to accomplish it. Steps. Okay, life gets in the way, things happen, obstacles raise their ugly heads, things get in the way. But once you've done the basics, then you're down to doing um, the, the, you're down to working the daily routine, um, and you're down to doing a full um, goal um, setting uh, session once a year. Okay, and then you know you you're going to review and check every three months. You want to have a look and see where you're going. You've got daily targets, weekly targets, monthly targets. Are you making them? All that sort of thing. But those are just sort of keeping you on the course, keeping you heading in the direction of your dream, and doing all those things that pull the dream into you. Okay. So let me go back and set up the next um, slide here. Okay, so, um, boom, okay. Now, that's the next slide. Okay, so where are you right now? Write out your current truth. Where are you? Don't be critical, be factual. So. Um, so it's not um, a list of, um, oh, I've been bad, I haven't done this, this I'm awful at this, uh, blah, 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 blah. It's your truth, your facts. So, um, you know, I want to, so one of mine is I want to publish one new personal development book each year. Okay, so where are you? Well, I haven't published any yet, but it doesn't mean you lazy slob, blah, blah, be factual. 
I haven't published my first book yet, okay? Um, so there's one part of my vision. Go through that. Where are you? Well, um, you know, I haven't hired a staff member yet. I'm not to that point, but it's something I need to do. So you, you begin to get an idea of where you are. So, you know, um, that's the process. Um, take some of the points from your vision statement and write out what you still need to do to achieve them. So this is where your vision statement comes in really handy. Is okay, here's your vision. Now, um, you know, there's your vision. There's your ideal scene, what your day looks like, your perfect day. And here's your vision statement, all your tools you're going to use to come up with that gap. Ask yourself, what steps do I need to take to move from um, my current state towards my dream? So ask that question over and over and over. Okay, what steps do I need to take? Because you're now beginning to see all of a sudden your dreams coming down into action steps. Here's where the rubber hits the road. This is where you're going to start to build the action plan for your dream. That's what this gap is all about. Okay, so let's uh, take that down. Um, okay, so so there it's it's a process. Make lists. Um, I did that in my journal. I, I made a bunch of headings, and then I started writing them down. Okay, um, what sort of things? Because, let me just see where I wrote that and I can tell you some of the headings I used. Um, I used um, needed resources. So what resources do I need to build my dream? So I wrote a list there. What will my clients um, perceive? So, so the, another question, um, this is a really good one, I don't know whether I included it in this the slide, is what is the value that my clients are going to get from me achieving my dream? So when you say, what, do, what okay, when you talk about your dream, you're talking about all the things that are going to happen for you. When you're writing your ideal scene, it's what your life is going to look like. Well, that's good, but you need to now approach it from the angle of the people you're working with, the, the people you're sharing your ideas. And feel what, what value are you bringing to them? What are they going to get out of what you're doing? It's a good process to go through. Okay, so I wrote a list for that. Um, what people, I had a people, find the people to be part of my dream. Who are those people? So I started writing out um, a list of people that I know that might fit into what I want to achieve. And, and I need people to um, complement what I know that can do things that I can't, all those sort of things. So um, whatever you need to do, I, oh, I believe strongly in lists. So use lists. Write out lists, keep them handy, keep them in a journal, put them on Evernote. Um, however you do that, create that list. And then from that, these are the tools that you're going to use to build your action plan. How cool is that? You And see, it hasn't, you haven't had to do, struggle with anything. Getting words down, writing things, sort of working on your vision, clarifying your vision. You've been doing all that. You're, you're bringing things into focus. And now because you've done that, you are now getting the benefit of all that work. Because now, magically, your action plan is almost creating itself. Okay. Uh, let me go back and have a look and see. Um, Okay, so we have, I have a nice little quote here for you. How are we doing for time? I think we're doing okay. So, okay. 
So the bridge from your dream to your goals. Your dream is a general idealistic, idealistic view of where you would like to go. But your goals are specific, realistic declarations of how you're going to get there. Source, Dick Briggs. Diggs. Dick Briggs. Okay, so let me read that to you again. Your dream is a general idealistic view of where you would like to go. But your goals are specific, realistic declarations of how you're going to get there. Uh, that's perfect. I mean, it fits perfectly with what we've been talking about. So um, uh, let me get back here. So um, like this, this book is what I've been working through. And this is the basis of these videos. And this is um, Put Your Dream to the Test by John C. Maxwell. It's an awesome book. I highly recommend it. Um, and it's like a resource. It's a great resource to use. Um, there are lots of other books like Finding Your Passion, um, The Passion Test. Um, I'm going to try to create a list of resources as we get through um, these um, seminars. Um, so there it is. That that's your you're talking about your your gap. And um, again, your dream is a general idealistic view of where you would like to go, but your goals are specific, realistic declarations of how you are going to get there. Like, boom. Now you can see the difference between a dream and a goal. It, there is a clear difference, which is why I talk about having dumb dreams. So those are, are dreams, the big dreams. You don't worry about whether they're smart, whether they're realistic, whether they're actionable, um, whether they're measurable. What, what All those things in the, the smart acronym you don't need to be worried about. What you want to be worried about is how big can you dream this dream of yours. And that's all you're doing. Then you come down to the level of goals and now you start picking away at that dream. Okay, so I need to get uh, 2,000 or 10,000 names a year. How am I going to do that? Okay, I'm going to do um, Facebook actions every day. So I'm going to do these things on Facebook. I am going to learn how to build a sales funnel. Um, I am going to learn um, um, how to get a pop-up pop opt-in page on my website. All those things, those are actions. I'm just rambling off the top, but they're actions I need to take. Um, some of them I, I kind of know how to do, but I'd like to do a better job of. So, so all of a sudden, you're taking your dream and you're going, okay, so this bit here, how am I going to do that? How do I get there? Okay, I'm, I'm here. I have a gap in my knowledge. I have a knowledge gap to get me here. So I, I need to learn some stuff to get here. I have to do these things to get here. Action, 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 action. Okay, but it's, it's, it, it almost does itself. Because when you look at that and you go, okay, um, what, you know, like I want to, to, to live in a tropical location over the cooler months here. Yeah, I'm going to lose that turn loosely. Um, in Canada, it gets pretty cool in the winter. Um, only on the west coast, you really escape winter sort of, but it still gets rainy and wet and damp. And it, You know, one of my passions is sitting outside in the morning having breakfast outside. I just love that. Last couple of days, I haven't been able to do it because it's poured with rain or it's gotten too cold to sit outside. So how do I, where do I go? How do I do that? What are the steps? I've been working on that part of my dream. I've been reading um, lots of material about where you can go, how much it costs, um, you know, all the sort of technical things that you might need to, to get into place to do that. So what, what I'm saying is when you do this process, then the actions start 
falling out of the sky and creating your action plan. So when you look at your dream and you've got this massive dream up here and you're going, okay, that part of that dream, I am here. That's my gap. Hey, there's my gap. It could be a knowledge gap. It could be an experiential gap, so you need the experience of doing certain things to get there. Um, so those, so what are the actions I need to do to, to conquer that part of it? Okay. So that's, uh, let's go back here. Ooh. Where, uh, I shouldn't make noises like that on air, should I? <laughs> oh, let me go back to my screen share. I've been not very professional making sounds like that. Is it? Um, there we go. I need to. I need to learn to be more professional as I speak. So here we go. We're going back to our our screen share, and I don't know if you guys remember the struggles I was having to to do these, and now I'm beginning to feel comfortable um, with it. And just I'm just going to pop it out of here for a second. Hang on, guys. Um, where do we want to go? Here. Um, hi, Cindy. I'm glad to see you're here. I could see there was somebody on, and I wanted to see who it was. Um, and I have to now go back uh, and change my Oops. Okay. Do. Now, did that do it? Because, oh, yeah, it did. Hey, that's getting even better. Ooh, I just leave it on. Hey, I just learned something just to, so I could say hi to you, Cindy. That's awesome. Okay, the sweet spot. This is what we call the sweet spot in dream building, the place where the dream begets its goals. Doing all the pre-work prepares you for laying out your plan of action. The goals that will bridge the gap between your current now and your future now. So, um, to me, that's exciting. I, I don't know about you, um, but but I get excited about it. That's exciting. Like you, you've done this work, all of a sudden your actions just are happening. They just come to you. Um, you know, that's that's when you know the process is working. And if it isn't happening for you, you need to just step back a little bit and go, okay, what part of my vision isn't clear enough? So that I can say, if you get your vision really clear, you are going to see the goals that you need to take, okay? So what's more, let's go back to getting up the, okay. We're getting down to the end here. Um, oh, this, I love this, guys. Um, uh, this is, uh, oops, what have I done? Oh yeah, sorry, okay. Um, so this is a quote. I love this one. I found it. I found this in John C. Maxwell's Put Your Dream to the Test. I love it. Johann Wolfgang, uh, Wolfgang um, Goethe. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, this is a beautiful quote. Each indecision brings its own delays. And days are lost lamenting over lost days. What you can do or think you can do, begin it. For boldness has magic, power, and genius in it. Don't you just love that? Um, I got I got to read it again. So think back to the Brenda Bouchard video. If you weren't on when you started, you'll be able to go back and listen to that uh, video, and it will also be in my um, I, I post the. Um, uh, slideshow to the to the presentation as well so you can look at the slides the slide will give you the video um, share link so you can go in and look at the video as well but um, a quote to inspire you is each decision brings its own delays and days are lost lamenting over lost days 
What you can do or think you can do, begin it. For boldness is magic power and genius in it. Oh, isn't that just great? I, I think it's wonderful. Okay, sorry, I'm getting carried away here. Um, let's go here. Whoops. There we go. And... Okay, so we're going to go, let me change where I'm at. Boom. Okay. And, okay, we have a movie. Um, let me see. I think I have to go there to start it. This is a um, Anthony Robbins and kind of sums up everything that we've been talking about. Um, Why don't we take action fear? What do we got to do to get ourselves to do it? We got to make sure that we push ourselves through it by making a decision. The point in which change happens is a decision. Every change in your life that you want will come from something simple, a decision. People go, what does it take to change? Decide. And you go, oh, God, that sounds so simple. So basically, it was that easy. You'd already have done it, Mr. Robin. No, it is that easy, and you're still not doing it because you are not putting yourself in a state to decide. See, a real decision is not like a preference. It's not like when you say, I'll try it and see. That's not a decision. Decision comes from Latin. It means like incision to cut off from. Decision is when you cut off any possibility except the thing you've committed to. It's like that is it. How many of you in this room have ever smoked cigarettes and then one day you finally decided no more, I mean really decided, and you've never touched again and you're not even tempted to? How many made that decision one time? Say I. You know what a real decision is. If I came to you today and I said, would you like a cigarette? Would you go, what brand is it? No, you'd probably say to me, no, I'm not a... I want you to hear that. You'd not only say, I don't smoke. You'd say, I'm not even that kind of person. You literally divorce yourself from even that kind of person. So it's no effort. When you really decide, it's not an effort. Once you've cut it off, it doesn't take effort. Deciding takes effort, but once you've decided, it's over. You don't think about it anymore. It's like it's easier to fast than it is to diet. Because when you're fasting, somebody offers you something, you don't even think about it. You go, no, I'm not eating. Right? When you're dieting, you're like, well, maybe we could have a little more. This is a little piece of cake. Not that many calories. Right? Bring you your back to where you were again. So a real decision is what you got to make. When you make a real decision, life changes. But it's a real decision. You burn your bridges. You only move forward. Now, the way to get yourself there is to put yourself in state and condition it. Conditioning is this. Build a muscle. You do it one time. No. You do it a lot, and you do beyond what you're comfortable with, and the muscle expands, and now what used to be hard to do, as the muscle grows, is easy. That's the same thing with every other kind of muscle. But I'll give you one example. They take monkeys. I don't know proof of this research, but this is what they do. In UC Irvine, University of California, Irvine, they've done these studies where they take monkeys, and they will take four of their fingers and tape them down. Then they take one finger, and they bend it back and forth 10,000 times. Every time they bend this finger back and forth like this, Use this as a metaphor. In your brain, for you to do this once, twice, you have to make connections between neurons in your brain. Neurons a big word for nerve cells. So to do this, imagine, as a metaphor, it's not exactly like this, to do this once, you're going to put a connection, a thin thread had to be grown between this neuron and this neuron, as an example, as a metaphor. Do it again, two thin threads. Do it 10,000 times, and guess what? You are wired to do this. Here's the point. They untape the monkey's fingers, and what do we do constantly? for no good reason. He's wired, conditioned to do this. Now, how does it relate to you? Well, how many of you go to work the same way every day? You drive on the same on-ramp, go the same direction, get off the same on-ramp. How many got a pattern like that? Say, I. How many have had a day when you're supposed to go the opposite direction on the freeway or the road, but you're on the cell phone and your brain is at the lunch and you get on the same on-ramp going the same direction that you normally do that's the wrong way? Say, I. Your monkey. And you condition yourself to feel depressed to where it literally it feels more comfortable because you go there more often and you're wired to be there. Yes or no? Can you condition yourself to be quick to anger? Yes or no? Can you condition yourself to feeling overwhelmed at the drop of a hat? Can you condition yourself to feel loved all the time? Even if people say, I hate you. Yeah, could you still feel up? Could you condition yourself to feel happy as a consistent way of living? All the time, yes or no? 
But you know what? Most people don't believe that, but of course it is. It's the same nervous system. But the environment reinforces negative behavior more than positive. People go, how's it going? Oh, my life is so great. Oh, easy for you. So pretty soon you learn to go, yeah, I'm doing okay. You don't want to get too good because then your peer group would be unhappy with you. So they're not feeling so good. So you learn to downplay it. And then you don't reward yourself so your brain doesn't go for more. So it goes, we've got to stay right in here. This is our little comfort zone. So we're going to condition ourselves to be in a peak state, especially when you're exhausted. Because like, remember when you're doing the muscle? When you, the one where you can't lift one more and you make yourself do it, that's where you get all the growth. So when you're most tired, when you're going to push yourself, if you didn't listen to anything I said, but all you did was keep yourself in a peak state for three days, you'll develop something called emotional muscle. And emotional muscle is where the whole life comes in. Repetition is the mother of skill, so it gets conditioned, so it's automatic. I'll give you a clue. You know what I told you about them doing this with the finger of the animal? Here's what they discovered. You don't have to do this 10,000 times. All you got to do is do this about two dozen, max three dozen. If every time they do this, they stimulate the pleasure center of the brain of the animal. They do that literally physically by pushing a little uh, needle in the area of the brain that creates pleasure. But what happens is when you do this, they do this and they create pleasure. Instead of one string, they get like 500 every time you do it with pleasure. So what happens is you can condition yourself with that pleasure, and you can get this done in a short time. It doesn't have to take you five years. So we want to purposely put ourselves in these peak states over and over again, not as a rah-rah session, but literally as a training tool for our human nervous system. How many follow this? Say, I. Ah. And the secret is when you don't feel like doing it, that's when you got to do it the most. That's when you'll get the real conditioning. But don't just do it like, all right, yes, 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 yes. Okay? You've got to smile and make yourself feel good while you're doing it and make it better each time. What changes our whole life? Okay, so um, that's, um, again, uh, speaks again to action. Make a decision get going, get started. So um, that kind of brings us to the end of the broadcast. Um, just a couple of things here to sum up. One is I have a huge gap between where I am and my dream. I admit it, it's huge. But the most important part of understanding that is you don't see that gap, you don't discover what that gap is to stop you, it's to show you the way to get there, to show you the path to achieve your dream, rather than going, and you could, you could go, huh, there's no way, and stop. And that, that means that your dream hangs up out there, and there's no way to physically pull it into you. The moment you stop dreaming, that's what happens, and it doesn't manifest. So don't look at that gap as a negative thing. Don't go, oh my God, look how big my gap is. I'll never do it. That's not the right way to look at your gap. You go, there's my gap. Okay, there's one thing in my dream I need to achieve. How am I going to do it? Set out some ideas and we'll come back and we'll work on what that action plan should look like in the future. Okay, so so you're you're you've made amazing progress. You've got all this um, visualization of your dream. You've worked on getting it crystal clear. You've discovered where your gap is. Now you can start creating the plan to pull it into you. Okay, so it's been awesome sharing this time with you. Um, I love doing this. Um, I wish you an awesome day. Um, may the sun be shining wherever you are. And if it's not shining outside, make sure it's shining in your heart. Have a great day. Thank you.